the author of the new report called Debating How, Not Whether to Launch a New War. So, Peter, tell us what you found. Like you said, the numbers sort of speak for themselves. 205 guests, 125 were pro-war, six were against the war. This is the wars in Iraq and in Syria. The debate sometimes looked rather passionate. Uh, it would had the appearances of a real debate. But what they were really debating was the mechanics of war, whether we should drop bombs just on Iraq or on Iraq and Syria, whether Obama was aggressive enough. Uh, there were critics of the White House, but they were critics that were pro-war, people like John McCain, who were adamant that whatever Obama was doing was not nearly enough, and that the answer to this was to inflict more violence in Iraq and in Syria. That was the spectrum of debate from Henry Kissinger to Samantha Power. It's also interesting that you found that um, overwhelmingly pro-war opinions voiced on television, and also the majority Democrat. Yeah, you know, you, you have the Democratic Party in the person of Barack Obama and then his, his uh, affiliates inside the White House were on TV to make the case for war. But there was never a consideration to present anti-war opinions to oppose those ideas. As uh, Chris Matthews said on MSNBC's Hardball, everybody is for drone strikes, everybody is for airstrikes with this war. There is an acknowledgment that there's no need to have a debate about whether the country should go to war. It's a decision about what kind of war we should be waging. What's amazing is we still see on corporate television this preponderance of voices who supported the Iraq war. Is there any effort to engage the networks on why they ha keep having these guests back? Well, I think people ask this question all the time because it's just an obvious one. Uh, you had Phil Donahue sitting right here just a week ago saying, explaining what happened in the run-up to the war, 2002, 2003. And the question is... When he was fired. When he was fired from MSNBC and when he said dissent was basically eliminated from mainstream media. Has anything changed from 2002 to 2003 to right now? And the answer in, in this study is absolutely not. If anything, the debate is more restricted. Now. How did you do the study? These are the guests that showed up for debate and discussion segments, so not sound bites, uh, people who are invited to one-on-one -on -one interviews on the Sunday shows, on PBS NewsHour, and on a couple of the high-profile cable shows. Wolf Blitzer, um, special report on Fox News Channel. You are activism director of FAIR. What are you recommending? Well, you know, the most obvious thing to ask people to do is to contact these shows and say, if we're going to war, and, you know, this week Congress is going to debate this war, the authorization for use of military force, have people who oppose the war. I know it sounds like a radical idea, but anti-war activists are more than happy to show up on television and debate this if they're given the chance. And, of course, if you look back to 2002 and 2003, it was the anti-war activists, the few peace activists you saw on television who ultimately were correct that there weren't weapons of mass destruction. Absolutely. And, you know, there isn't a question right now about WMDs. The question is, is violence the answer to this political problem that we have? And you would think the lessons from Afghanistan, from Iraq, and from Libya would be there's a need to have this debate, but the big media says no.